Hi. Move my chair. Hey, folks, it's lesson 24, binary 11000. And it's time to solve decimal equations. It won't that be fun? Do you remember back in the day in those those workbooks that you had for uh, arithmetic where the teacher made you work on writing out, sometimes in cursive, the place value of a decimal number? Do you had to kind of say how that number was built up by powers of 10, basically. And you had to do stuff like this. This is the tens place. This is the ones place. This is the ten place. This is the, and I'll do it in cursive. Hundred. This place, and then you got the the um hundred thousands place. Thousand is the thousands place. Okay. Now they did that all for a good reason. You're, they're teaching you to understand what what uh, place value means, and then how, like I said, how a number in base ten is, or the decimal system is built on powers of ten. This number seventeen point three two four is made up of one ten to the one, seven ten to the zeros. And then you've got uh, three 10 to the negative ones. You've got two 10 to the negative twos. And you've got three 10 to the negative threes, or three tenths, four hundredths, and uh, three two hundredths, and four thousandths. So that number could be written this way. It could be written as 10 times one, and uh, uh, 10 to the zero times seven, and 10 to the negative 1 times 3 and 10 to the negative 2 times 2 and 10 to the negative 3 times 4. You could build it up like that. That's all place values there to do. Its position, that 3 in that position tells you what it's worth, right? If the 3 was somewhere else, it would be worth a different amount. Now, decimals were difficult because, as far as I remember, it was hard when they'd write the problem this way, from left to right, um, of trying to line the things up in my head as to as to where things got added up. If there's different numbers of decimals in one number than there was in the other, then really the only way you could you could safely do this kind of thing would be to write it out in columns, and they had to be perfectly straight columns. So that you could you could add or subtract those things straight up and down. We even would put something like an imaginary zero there, so that we could do this type of of addition. We do it from right to left. Unfortunately, um, the the problem is when there's things like this, and when the number of digits here don't match, it's really really hard to line those things up. And the same is going to be true when we're dealing with decimal equations, when we have something like this, okay? When you're dividing by a decimal, like what do you do? You gotta get that calculator out. And um, what I wanna show you is like way to get around some of the math there, okay? So we're not adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing by decimals, which is very difficult. Do you remember those rules? Like how many places do I move that decimal point over in my answer? And is it different in addition than than it is a multiplication and just all these rules and, and algorithms and steps and stuff to remember. So let's just do this more like, um, I don't know, like that just makes sense, hopefully, that it's more maybe intuitive, okay? In the last video at the end, I probably confused everybody by by getting rid of the fractions, by multiplying everything through by by a whole number. I'm going to do the same kind of thing today, but the whole number is just going to be a power of 10. And the key to a problem like what I've got there over, you know, just under my ear, wait, there, just under my ear, it's in my ear. I'll get it out, get it out. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. 
the key to these ones is to identify the biggest decimal place or the not the biggest I shouldn't say that smallest decimal place the the, the uh, smallest decimal digit how about that and then multiplying through by what would undo that remember the whole, whole undoing business so how would you undo something that's a tenth well you multiply by ten wouldn't you you want to get back to a whole number how would you undo something that's a hundredth you multiply by a hundred and now you don't have that decimal anymore or a thousandth you're going to multiply by a thousand and that will undo that decimal place but if i do it to one side i have to do it to the other we have to remember that rule as well so um if i multiply everything by the same amount if we remember the multiplication property of equality that doesn't change the equation's value it's just going to change its form and make it easier to um, to work with okay smarter not harder that's where we want to go with this so i'm going to use that rule and boy it would be a really good thing to to write down some of these amazing things that i'm saying here now one of our goals with the decimal equation is to simplify this to make it so that everything's a whole number Whole numbers are much easier to deal with than decimals or fractions for that matter. So let us follow our multiplication property of equality, multiply both sides or every piece here by some whole number, in this case power of 10 because we're decimals, we're in the, the metric system, we're in the, the base 10 system. Multiply by a power of 10 all the way through until we don't have any more decimals then all we got to do is our two-step process that we already learned about undoing the order of operations so what do i mean by that well this is 4.7 or 4 and 7 tenths this here is 0 0.08 we could say this is 8 on one hundredths eight hundredths and over here 3.1 or 3 and 1 tenth so you have to kind of say those decimal places in order to know how much to multiply by now I can I can fix this one by just multiplying it by 10, but multiplying by 10 will only move this decimal point over one place. I really need to move it over two places. So I have eight hundredths. I need to multiply that one by a hundred. That is the one with the furthest number of decimal points out here. And so everything needs to be multiplied by that same number of uh, power of 10. So if I get eight hundredths is the smallest thing out there. I need to multiply everything by 100, okay? I want you to think about it more in terms of multiplying by powers of 10 than moving the decimal place a certain number of places. That can be confusing too. It's equivalent to move the decimal place one place is either to multiply or divide by 10. To move it twice is either to multiply or divide by 100. But the reason for that is we're undoing, we're undoing those tenths and hundredths and whatnot. So, if I multiply 4 by 4.7 by 100, and if you really have to do it on your calculator, you will get 407. If I multiply 0 0.08 by 100, I will get 8. And if I multiply 3.1 by 100, I'll get 310. Now the numbers are bigger, but you're you're in high school, okay? You're doing algebra, so big numbers don't don't bother you as much as maybe decimals would, right? So let's go ahead and tackle this problem. Two-step process. What we've got here is addition, and so let's undo that with some subtraction, and then we'll have we'll go from there. So I got I'm gonna isolate this M here. I want it to stay on one side, and everything moves to the other. So let's move this seven uh, 470 over now you can do this right if you can't do this in your head or, or just on the paper do it on the calculator for crying out loud don't spend too much time on any one question so we'll get uh the difference here 160 and the negative 470 is bigger so my answer would be negative and then that leaves us with one step left if we have multiplication over here to isolate m we're going to have to divide by 8. And luckily, you can see this is also divisible by 8. So BM equals 
negative 20. That is the right answer that goes along with this original equation. We could plug in negative 20 in right here and have 4.7 times a plus 0 0.08 times negative 20, and that would equal 3.1. Pretty much guarantee you can do it on your calculator just to be sure. If you're really interested, do this. Do this problem right here. And hopefully you'll get that bit right there. You see what I did there? That really simplifies things. Let me clean up my board and I'll do maybe two more. And then uh, and then you're on your own. All right. There are some occasions where you might think, why in the world would I need to do all this extra stuff? It's just decimals. And that's true. If you uh, feel comfortable with the addition, subtraction, multiplying, and dividing by decimals, I guess you can just go ahead and do that. You're probably just going to end up picking up your calculator and not being terribly smart. Algebra is about the steps or the process or the thinking that you do to get to the right answer. That's sometimes more important than actually getting the right answer. That might sound weird from a math teacher, but it's kind of the way it goes. So this one, if you notice that everything's already in tenths, then fine, fine. Have it your own stinking way, and you can just uh, subtract 0.8, and that leaves you with 1 over here and 0.2m on this side. But kind of in a sense, what does dividing by 0.2 mean, right? Well, it's 2 tenths. You're dividing 1 into 2 tenths sounds kind of like a weird a weird problem. You get to there, and maybe you're stuck, and then you get your calculator out, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Where you could have just multiplied everything by 10. And then you've got 2m plus 8 equals 18, and you go, oh, oh, that's like, I can think through that one. Where you're like, 2m equals 10. And then you just finish that thing off. Like conceptually, that's way easier. For me, that seems like that's a much easier problem than trying to think in decimals and divide by decimals and what actually that does that mean. Okay? Um, and I could do one, uh, the division by 0 0.2 in my head because that's 2 tenths or 1 fifth. 1 divided by 1 fifth is 5. But uh, I can't picture it very well in my head. I can picture 10 divided by 2 pretty easily in my head. Another problem would be finding decimal parts of numbers. And here we're going to do some translating. And then we'll do our little trick by multiplying it through by a whole number, power of 10. And that is that 0.48, or if I'm going to read this, 48 hundredths, 48 hundredths of 86 is what number? And I can leave this as a decimal and just convert some of these things. Of means multiply is means equals, and then what number we'll call um, n, okay? So there's a problem. That's it. What if I multiply it through by 100? Well, I guess I don't really have to. Calculator can do that part, and I've got my answer right there, but I think part of that's just translating. There just happens to be decimals in there, and uh, we've got our thing. So, um, yeah. You can use that concept of multiplying through by whatever's going to undo the smallest decimal. If it's hundredths, then multiply by a hundred. Or maybe you want to think of it this way. If you've got a number, I look at this and I see that there's three decimal places. I need to multiply by something with three zeros in order to undo that problem. Does that make sense too? Just count the decimal places and multiply by a power of 10 that has that many zeros, and that will undo all the decimals and leave you with only whole numbers to deal with. Much simpler math at that point, easier on the brain. Okay, you're going to reserve that energy for Mr. McAndrews' class or something. Uh, hope that helps. Practice some of these in class if you want to, but um, that I think is the quickest, fastest most intuitive method for dealing with decimal equations.